Hi guys, welcome to MS Power Automate. In today's video, we will be going through the loop actions. In this module, you will use simple loops to perform a given number of repetition and iterate through data, deploy loop conditions in order to repeat actions until a condition is met, iterate through the items of a list using for each loops and explicitly, and loops when required. To show you an example, the loop action uses a loop index variable, is assigned as an initial value, and an end value, and an increment value. So start off with a set variable. I would like to declare a client number of 10, and I drag a loop action. I would like to start from 0 and end to client number. Increment by 1. So when I click save, I would like to drag a message box here. I'd like to display the loop index. So this loop action is most commonly used when the number of repetition required is known beforehand or when an index value is required within the block of actions that are repeated. For example, when iterating a list or a table. Moving forward is the loop condition. Loop condition is designed to repeat as long as a specified condition is true. When a repetition ends, the condition is evaluated. If it's true, then the loop repeats. Otherwise, it ends. So to show you an example, I would like to create a set variable. I would like to set a total budget equals to zero. I would like to drag a loop condition action. First operand is total budget. Operator is less than or equal to, let's say, I put 20. And then, I would like to increment the value of total budget by 1. So in this case, you will see that it will end when the total budget value has turned 20. So when I run, you can see the output here. And done. Okay, so in this case, why the total budget is 21? It's because when it reaches less than or equals to 20, it will still increment the value. And the next time when it's 21, it's no longer 20. That's why it ends the loop. Okay, so let's now move forward to the for each loop. For each loop, it iterates a list or table of items and repeat once for each item. The loop will end when it has iterated through all the items of the list or table it received as input. So to show you an example, let's try to get files in folder. In this case, I would like to get the files in my D drive folder. The files to filter, I just put an asterisk. 
and you if you go to the advanced option there are few options you can use to sort by ascending or descending in this case i'm not needed so you will generate for me a variable called false which is a list okay so what i do is for each the values to iterate i select false it will produce me a variable called the current item which you can use this for each of the iteration when i click save so in this case i would like to display a message box i can write it this way name and then i indicate the current item or you can do a full name current item you can also get the extension of the form name full name extension Okay, so in the next example, we would like to go through the exit loop. Okay, so the exit loop, it used to immediately end the loop. To show you an example, the end loop must be placed inside a loop block and is always used within a conditional. So in this case, I would like to set a condition where if the current item contains the name of three dot and I click save, I would like to exit the loop. Okay, so let's try to run the Okay, one, two, three, and it exit the loop. That's how the exit loops works. I have created a generate random number flow. In this case, I have a actions called generate random number of zero to twenty. I display an input dialog to ask for the user to input a value and I convert the input value to a number and I use a loop condition while the user input number is not equal to the random number if the number is less than the random number I will display a message box to guess a larger number otherwise to guess a smaller number if the number match, you will send a congratulation, you guess the number correctly. So I guess a number of 2. And it says random number is larger than 2. Guess a larger number. Let me try 4. Random number is smaller than 4 guess a smaller number so in this case i know that the number is three congratulations you guess the number correctly that's all for the loop actions so if you're keen to learn more do remember to subscribe our channel as we have constant updates and tutorial videos on microsoft power automate desktop thank you